show me the law. I'm going to show you the law. I found it. They've been hunting all over for it, and uh, I found it, and so we're going to get into that. However, this seminar is um, uh, divided into three parts. The first part is the foundation. You will not be able to understand. <coughs> You'll be looking right at the law and not know you're looking at it if you don't have the foundation. You've got to have this foundation first. So we're going to spend uh, the first seven hours on the foundation. It'll only take about an hour to discuss the law itself. And then it will take another couple of hours to show the remedy on the law. And um, the, the law and the remedy on the law, I think, will be quite apparent if you have a good foundation. So pay attention to that foundation. That is really, really important. It took me many years to focus in on it. it. Took a lot of bad decisions. You know, we got a lot of experience here. Where did that experience come from? It came from bad decisions. <laughs> okay. Yes. Experience comes from bad ex decisions. So we've made our bad decisions along the way. We got the experience. Now we can make good decisions based on that experience. So this is the foundation. What you see here, by the way, is on the website, 1215.org, OK? This is the Nitty Gritty Law Library and Sovereign's Paradise putting on the show here. And um, uh, <clears throat> this foundation, if you get this foundation down pat, you pretty well got it knocked. You can, you can pretty well handle any situation that comes along. However, handling any situation coming along does not mean you have a license to harm other people. You know, this is all premised on you being legally right, lawfully right, and morally right. If you don't have all three of those factors down, then you've got a problem. And uh, if you are, it's possible to be legally wrong. You can be morally right and lawfully right, which means common law right, but you could be statutorily wrong. Well, the statutory wrong that has to yield to the common law, okay? So if there's a conflict between the common law and the statutory law, the, the statutory law must yield. Now you see, if you look at the, uh, at the codes, the codes say, particularly in California, I think it's the, uh, either the Civil Code or the Code of Civil Procedure, I forget which, but I think it's 22.2, .2, which says basically that uh, that the common law shall be the rule of decision unless, or so long as it's not uh, in conflict with the statutory law. And that is true if you're in the statutory house. If you, if you set up your case to operate under statutory law, then that's how it's going to be. But in truth, the common law takes precedence if you start off in the common law house and use it. But we'll get into that. Anyway, the first thing I want to cover is attitude. This is really, really important. Um, if, you, um, if you have a bad attitude, if you have an attitude where you're always angry, you're always upset, well, obviously, court procedures won't be fun. And let me tell you something. Court procedure can be lots of fun, especially if you're in charge. And um, you, but you have to have a good attitude. If you have an angry attitude, this will work against you for a number of reasons. For one thing, people start off simply not giving you the credibility. For some reason, anger reduces the credibility, the perception of credibility on the part of other people. So you basically have to be a very calm, very uh, friendly kind of person, regardless of the issues that are going. So you, um, plus, if you are a person who is emotionally locked up and you're into anger, or if you're in any emotion, strong emotional position, be, the, be it happy or angry, 
you will be blinded to your opportunities. You will not see the opportunities that are there because of how your mindset will color your, your ability to perceive. So your mindset uh, very much controls your ability to perceive. So the proper mindset, if you really want to do law well, is you've got to neutralize yourself and be open to everything. Don't be automatically rejecting things just because they conflict with whatever you're seeing or thinking or whatever. Um, and by the way, this rule that I'm giving you applies to attorneys too. And the beautiful part is, is every attorney that I've ever had to deal with um, had a mindset that I was absolutely ignorant because I'd never been to law school and didn't know anything. And they took liberties and they weren't sensitive to the stuff I put into the papers. And then wham, they get it <laughs> in the end, you know. And the very common thing that I hear when I go to court is the attorney says to the judge, he says, Your Honor, I don't understand this paperwork. Well, the judge understands because he went through corrective schooling, commonly known as judges' seminars. You know, they, they have programs where they teach judges what the real law is because somebody's got to keep the system straight. And, uh, and they do. In fact, um, I've noticed a remarkable consistency in the codes. And I know the attorneys aren't that smart. And I, I wondered for a long time, how is it that they passed all these laws and had it right? Well, you look at the, the, the legislative procedure and what they do is they pass it through to the legislative committee. And so one time I went up to uh, the Capitol in Sacramento and I thought, boy, this is an opportunity. And I went to the legislative committee's offices and I happened to get a hold of a supervisor. And so I was all ready to, I was all primed to ask the supervisor about the process they went through and how they reviewed it and, and so forth, you know. It took about 30 seconds for me to realize this person didn't, know the fir didn't have the f first clue of what the real system was. So I had to change my program. And what I did was I asked the person, I said, well, could you explain the procedure, just exactly what happens when a, a proposed statute comes to your office? What, what is the next step? And she says, oh, well, what we do is we have a meeting with the judges from the Supreme Court. And they, and they critique it for us as well. And we, we work it out in a committee, in a meeting. So there you are. Here I thought that the fountain of knowledge would be in these legislative committees. Turned out they didn't have a clue. The real fountain of knowledge is, is with these high-level judges. They know. I've never had a problem with a high-level judge. They, you know, they, I may have had problems, but they're all legitimate problems. They, the, uh, they understand, they're well-educated, they're intelligent. These guys know. And if you get your act right, you'll get the results. So, um, again, its attitude is very important. When they perceive you as basically a good guy, that's what counts. Um, there was a, um, uh, a um, very important lesson came to me out of that, and that is make sure you're likable. I'm friendly to the judge, I'm friendly to the, uh, to the uh, attorneys, you know. I, uh, I have to admit, one of my moments of glory was when I had an attorney screaming at me so loud that you could hear the echoes off the end of the hall that was 300 feet away. But uh, that was a rare opportunity. That doesn't happen every day. But, uh, um, but even that guy liked me as a person. You know, he was just angry because he wasn't getting what he thought he should get out of the courts. Um, <laughs> But it's very important to have the right attitude. Get the clerks to like you. Those, you know, people don't have an ax to grind against you when you first walk in. But if you show an attitude that's bad, you can generate dislike, you can generate lack of cooperation. And I can tell you that some of the best research we've ever had done was done by the clerks themselves to help us. It's just amazing because they, they really liked us. They, they perceived us as good people. I go in, I talk to the clerks all the time, and, and I do talk to them, you know, on a personal basis. And it's, hi, how are you, how's the family kind of thing, and, uh, and you tell them a joke or something. So, uh, it, and it's a good way because then they start, uh, they start cooperating with you. You don't look so much like a kook. Remember, you're doing some very, very strange things at